Right boys, so you wanna lose weight. So you know how to do that. You need to be in a calorie deficit each day. So you work out your BMR. If your basal metabolic rate factoring in exercise is 2,500, if you eat 2,000 calories each day, you'll lose weight. So that is just cause and effect. There's no emotion involved. If you eat less than your BMR, you will lose weight. That being said, that's normally about as far as people go. And you'll see a lot of advice saying, as long as you're under your BMR, you can eat what you want. You want to eat that donut or pizza or whatever, then go for it. And I think that is true under two circumstances. If you're young, because youth compensates for a lot in terms of health. So if you're young, if you're under 25, you can get away with it. Still not recommended. Or if you're on performance enhancing drugs, if you're on steroids, you can get away with it. Again, not recommended. So if health is important to you, I would strongly recommend that you transition on to real food. So you've probably been brought up on a Western diet that is very palatable, high in sugar, and it's not. it takes a bit of getting used to real food again. So just in my experience, if you're over 25, you want to get onto real food as much as possible. And even just a concept of real food like I work in a supermarket and I walk around it's massive and 90% of the food there isn't even real food you look at the ingredients list and the way I like to to classify real food is a real food has one ingredient and it's found in nature so a banana I know we've like engineered our fruits and stuff but a banana is a real fruit there's one ingredient banana beef is real food. There's one ingredient, beef, and it's found in nature. Paul Check says it's either grows or has eyes. So it's either a plant or an animal. Oh, I guess you've got mushrooms and stuff, but you know what I mean. So if health is important to you, and especially longevity, then you're going to want to eat real food. So a good resource that helps you get your head around this is this guy's work, Dr. Weston A. Price. He travelled around the world in the 1920s and 30s and he was a dentist and he was going to like tribes and indigenous populations and assessing their dental health but also their general health and he was taking pictures and he would kind of compare ones that had been exposed to a western diet and ones that were eating traditional foods and he just found that if you eat a western diet you basically get a load of diseases and you're dental your teeth go to shit and it's terrible whereas if you eat a traditional diet they're generally very healthy and we tend to think in the west like everything we do is the cutting edge where the um like our medical care is the best when in reality the majority of people are eating foods that aren't even real foods that can't sustain life they're literally poisonous so in this book food by michael pollan he sums up uh what western a price found quite quite well so i'll read it for you populations eat so-called western diet generally defined as a diet consisting of lots of processed foods and meat lots of added fat and sugar lots of refined grains lots of everything except vegetables fruit and whole grains invariably suffer from high rates of so-called western diseases obesity type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease and cancer so that's the western diet that's what most people are eating that's what you'll find in a supermarket and then he says populations eating a remarkably wide range of traditional diets generally don't suffer from these chronic diseases these diets range from ones very high in fat the inuit in greenland subsist largely on seal blubber to ones high in carbohydrates Central American Indians subsist largely on maize and beans to ones very high in protein. Maasai tribesmen in Africa subsist chiefly on cattle blood, meat and milk. So he says these are extreme examples. But so that's the Western diet. That's what we have like come to adopt. Processed foods versus traditional 
real foods. And it just makes perfect sense. Like if you just think about it logically, if I eat foods as found in nature and my body like is a result of evolution, surely I'm going to respond well to that. My body is going to use it to build muscle, replenish the tissues, any damage in the body. Or the other option, and that's food that's found in nature, so we're evolutionarily designed to consume that food. Or the other option is foods that have been engineered. Like bearing in mind, these foods are designed by highly paid, there's millions of pounds goes into engineering food in a way that it's addictive so that you buy more of it the cow doesn't even want to be eaten but so you're not going to get addicted to it in the same way that there's like a a motivation for you to eat so say ice cream that is literally designed well all foods are to be addictive even just the way our meals are set out so i would say like cereal i've found hunger is determined by the amount of carbs in your last meal. And if you look at our meals, they're all full of carbs, and I believe that's to keep you hungry so you keep consuming more food. So you wake up, meal one is toast or, you know, a slice of toast or cereal. Both very high carbs. So now you're hungry by 11 o'clock, then you're going to snack on... Do you know what I mean? So it's just a... I mean, that's a bit of a, well, that's not even a conspiracy theory. That's just how it is. But food is designed by scientists to be palatable and addictive. Food in nature is designed to be nourishing to the body. So this is the other part of it. You can be in a calorie deficit and lose weight, but do you just want to be lean and see your abs, but have disease, as Western A. Price would say, or do you want to be healthy and have longevity? So transition over to real foods so the actionable step for this is pick real foods that you can eat that you want to eat and i would just say well i'll do a video on this but beef is grass-fed beef is a superfood that is as real as it gets so choose some foods that are real that could be plants animals fruit veg and front front load it so you can still eat the shit, you work out what calories you're eating for that day, your target of calories, front load some nutritious food so at least you're getting nutrition into the body, then after that eat what you want and slowly over time increase the real foods and decrease the palatable shit till you're eating nothing but real foods. So now I'm at the point where 90% of what I eat is just real food as found in nature and your health and longevity will benefit from it. So, real foods. Ah, you get it. Done. We'll talk more about beef soon. Done.